three. How do you want it? How do you want it? Club Shay Shay is getting messier and messier. Uh, it's almost like Wendy Williams didn't go anywhere. She just got a weight set. Um, and so Monique was on. Every time I see Monique these days, she's on uh, doing some greasy ass video with her and her daddy complaining about something or working out. I don't know nobody that work out that much and gain weight unless every crunch you do has got capped in front of it. But apparently she goes on Club Shay Shay and tells the story about how she came on my radio show and I wasn't there at the time. And uh, uh, my co-host, Jasmine Sanders, played a game that we played all the time with everybody called Would You Rather. She apparently was so offended by that that she said she got off. She called me. Monique did. And she said I was very dismissive. Like, huh? Monique's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints. I listened to her and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't because I respected her wishes. She's a liar. It also befuddles the shit out of me how somebody who has a comedian talks as much shit about everybody else as she does. She has the temerity to be offended about anything as much shit as you say about people. Then she encouraged everybody. Uh, allegedly, it stems from the fact that I used to always talk shit about her on video after video. And she encouraged her sweet babies to look at the video and find them. Do that. Do exactly what she says. And you know what you're not going to find? You're not going to find any evidence of that because Monique is a liar she's lying about that but what you will find is monique talking shit about some uh, uh, alleged contract dispute we had look at the ticket it says dl hughley then monique she knows the story but what she did in response to that she talked about my dog my wife this broad even brought out my daughter's personal trauma my daughter was molested and monique bought that shit out and, t and told the world that i allowed my daughter to be raped in front of me the lying mother she knows she was lying and it only stopped when everybody from my family checked her. It's interesting. You know what else you won't see Monique doing? You won't ever see a, her with her family, videos with her children or grandchildren. Because nobody fucks with me. How do you have sweet babies when your own babies don't fuck with you? How do, how do you love us for real when there's no evidence of anybody loving you for real? Except your daddy, who you apparently have to pay. And FYI, daughters are paid for by daddies. Not daddies who get paid by their daughters. You'll never, you know what else you won't see Monique doing? Telling jokes. Monique, uh, if she just spent as much time actually writing jokes and writing her Netflix special as she did complaining about not having one, it wouldn't have been trash. It got the wor worst reviews of any Netflix special in history. Because that's what Monique does. She complains and she has grievances. You never see her being a human being. You never see her being sweet and warm to people. Except when she's using it to butter somebody up to get something. There's a reason why everywhere she go, shit starts. Everywhere she goes. How is it that nobody fucks with you? Not even your family. How do you? Well, I was on the road getting it. I get it every goddamn week. Look at my schedule versus yours. See how much I'm going. And I still manage to have a relationship that I cherish with my children. Can you say the same? You can't. Because all you do is talk about your grievances and who did you wrong. There's a reason you are fought by yourself. There's a reason you got to pay a man to love you. It's sad. There's an old adage that says you can't buy love. It's a shame, Monique, that you probably always will have to. I'm going to bring this up. I wasn't going to do it. But damn it, this is, this seat, tell I said, you might want to have another look, over. this seat make you go, truth, tell it. No, <laughs> tell the damn truth. God damn it, tell the truth. Because... Family is sacred. It's supposed to be. And we don't cross the line with family. Mm -hmm. And people begin to get comfortable to jump on the Monique bandwagon of Monique doing things wrong. And she doing this and she doing that. And there's a brother named D.L. Hughley. Yeah. And until he take accountability, I won't let it go. What? Because. What would you get ready to say? I was going to say, what did DL do? Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, that voice went up, didn't it? DL is friend. He like, that's my friend. No, I, I, I've i met DL on several occasions. Mm -hmm. I don't know DL like that. Okay. Do, I, do I know DL say like I know an earthquake? No. 
Do I know, uh, since I've interviewed Cat, had several conversations with him, do I know DL on that level? No. Right. See, when we say family is sacred, right. family is sacred. And we know that you don't cross the line when it comes to family. Correct. Right? I do DL's t- uh, radio show. Yes. DL Hughley is not there. His team is there. Mm-hmm. And Shannon, we having a great time. I mean, baby, we having a great time. We going forth, back and forth. When we get to the end of the show, they say, <coughs> Monique, you want to play a game? Well, I want to play. I said, sure, Shaka. Let's play a game. And it's a game called Would You Rather. No. Oh. Okay? Now. Monique, you already, you should have said, I'm too old for this game. Wait a minute. We're having fun, baby. <laughs> right? We're having a good time, okay, Shannon. Okay. okay. We, I mean, it's the sister there and it's two other guys. We're having a great time. It's okay. a beautiful black unity cookout. Okay. We're having a good time. Okay. Would you say your wife was your family? Is that considered family? Yeah. So your husband is considered family, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. So here we go. They said, Monique, we want to play a game of would you rather. Let's go. Would you rather... Your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom or Corinne Steffens without one. Really, Monique? Now, as y'all are watching right now who haven't heard this story, y'all going, huh, they doing the same thing in the studio. They going, huh, okay. That is exactly what happened. Now, I said to the team, how does that uplift our community? I said, sister, and her name is Jasmine. How could you ask another sister that? Well, we just planned. I said, tell me the joke in that because I don't know what you're insinuating. Then you're involving people that have nothing to do with nothing. Like, what are y'all doing? So I said, I'm going to call my brother. DL. I'm going to call my brother. I call DL Hughley on the phone. I say, hey, baby. Yeah. Huh? That's how he responds. Yeah. Did he know it was you? Yes, he, because they called him to let him know Monique's going to be calling. Right. Like this, it was getting crazy. Right. I'm like, just let me get on the phone with my brother, right? Yeah. Hey, DL, yeah. I said, listen, I just got off the phone with your team and they wanted to play this game, Would You Rather? And it was like, Stupid. Like, asking me about my husband and Lee Daniels and Corinne Steffens and his exact words. Well, that's how we do it. I said, DL, how does that uplift our community? And again, I don't know what y'all trying to insinuate, but brother, what you doing? Like I said, that's just how we do it. So it is what it is. Now, it got so ugly that my attorney had to send a cease and desist. So it never aired. So we have like... When Cat Williams talk and people, truth tellers talk, we have receipts to everything we're saying. That's how that whole thing got started. Okay? It's family. My husband is my family. Yeah. Now, you babies that are really good with this internet, through the years, I've watched DL speak ill of me. Through the years. I never knew me, I never knew DL Hughley had a problem with me. But when Cat said they all a group, He forgot to put D.L. Hughley in the group. Mm -hmm. Through the years, I was bitter. I was dangerous with what I was doing, saying that it was inequality. My husband didn't know what he was doing. This went on through the years. I was unloved, all of these things. And I said to myself, I'm going to see you. Mm -mm. I'm going to see you. I didn't go on nobody's show. I didn't say nothing to nobody, but I knew the time would come that I would see him. We were scheduled to do a show in Los Angeles. I was the headliner of that show. His name was on it, then his name came off. I didn't question it, but I knew I'm a Sam, right? Eventually. Okay, now we have a show in Detroit. Contractually, I was the headliner. D.L. Hughley posted a memo. Now, when you signed your deal for the Ravens, did you sign a contract or a memorandum? I signed a contract. You see how you say that? Like anybody that knows good business, you sign the memo was saying this is what I would like. Right. But the contract is saying this is what, what it, it is. is. Okay? Yes. He put out a memo to our community. And that touched me a little different because I was saying, why would you lie to our babies? Because now they're thinking if they send somebody a memo, that's what they're supposed to get. Mm-hmm. Okay? I was contractually signed to go as the headliner. Right. I mean you go last. 
D.L. Hughley didn't come into the building until 930. Now, contractually, I said I have to be on stage by 930 because if the show starts at 8, I refuse to keep an audience waiting. Right. That is disrespectful to the C- audience. Correct. When I went out on that stage, Shannon, I made sure everything I said, he heard me because now you're here and I'm going to say it to you. Mm-hmm. And I said some things on that stage that I said he was cowardly. And some folks said, how could you say that? How could you do that? And then I posted some things to say, this is what I meant. See, you came after my husband. And when you had a chance to fix it, when you had a chance to say, Mo, my bad, you know, we don't even get down like that. You told me it is what it is. And until he's brave enough and courageous enough to say, this is what really happened, y'all. Y'all have never known me to be no shit starter. Folks ain't never known me to go over and kick a sandwich out of somebody's hand that's hungry. But what people do know is, if you kick me, damn if I ain't going to kick you back. Right. Because that's fair play. Right. So there was one left out the pack. And when you have people that continue, as always, don't hit the subscribe button, like, that's why comment, you see us in the share, share holler at your boy.